Hello, this is Hank Kraber, the new chair of the SME Education and Research Community Steering Committee. Thanks for following the link and taking a few minutes to listen to this presentation. I wanted to talk with you for the next few minutes to share my thoughts on the SME ENR community and what we might address over the next few months. I took pages of notes at our annual meeting in Baltimore. Uh, which was another excellent conference hosted by SME. I've had several long discussions with Mark Stratton on the phone, uh, I've talked with Marshall, had some inputs from other people, and uh, still have a few questions, but I wanted to let you know uh, where, where I think we might go. Where do we fit in with the other technical communities in the society? That's been a little bit confusing. I know that we have a strong core of participants on the steering committee and that we've done a lot over the past several years, but I came away with the feeling that few outside the NER community really noticed the value of what we were doing. Our technical community is part of a unique structure for a professional organization. What SME is trying to do to help engage members is uh, pretty unique. Uh, to that end, I've attached a paper to this message that provides some discussion and framework of the technical community and SME structure and where I think the NER community fits in. I'd like to offer special thanks to Bob Mott for his review and providing some additional comments to help me fill this out. Over the summer, though, I've learned that some of this is changing as the new SME strategic plan comes out, and there still is a lot of uh, question as to exactly how all this is going to work out. It seems that our technical community just is not very well connected to our members or the other technical communities. If we have about 3,000 SME members that have joined the MER community, well that's fantastic. Now the question is how do we engage those members and, uh, and get them to become active within the, our technical community and within the society. I think we're going to have to get in better contact with them and come up with some ways that we can present opportunities for them to become engaged we have to kind of break down the silo structure that we have within the, uh, the structure of the technical communities. To that end, there is a meeting coming up in Milwaukee on September 12th and 13th of the uh, leaders of the technical communities. Uh, I know this is a problem for me. I have some family business that weekend that I, I can't go to Milwaukee. I've talked with Dan B and he can't be it there. He has another conference commitment for that weekend. So I'm not sure what we're going to do. This is a chance for the or for the technical community leaders to uh, to get together and talk on a Saturday night and Sunday morning. And I'm not sure how we're going to handle this now. Um, perhaps uh, if one of the members of the steering committee is interested, you could send me a message and let me know uh, and we could get you into uh, this Milwaukee conference to help represent the MER community. One of the things that SME is looking at is seems to be that they want to be the keeper of the manufacturing body of knowledge. I think there must be a way that the MER community can help support the expansion, development, maintenance, and probably the use of this manufacturing knowledge base and the society's knowledge resources. SMEs invested heavily in the uh, tooling U materials and is developing the digitized version of the Tool and Manufacturing Engineers Handbook, the TMEH and its knowledge base wiki. And the SME library has significant resources. How do we help 
the society uh, understand these resources, get them up to date, help people understand what's there and how to use it. I think there's an opportunity for the uh, MER community here. There's also the other manufacturing references and resources. Uh, we have several members that have been active with the uh, NCME in Dayton and its Manufacturing and Engineering Technology Education Clearinghouse. Uh, this is led by Steve Wendell, the NCME director. We also have the uh, MAT Ed. Uh, that's a development from NSF funded ATE sponsored center materials that was mentioned under the leadership of Mel Corset. These should probably be somehow linked through the SME um, clearinghouse for manufacturing knowledge. How do we continue our national leadership of manufacturing education? How can we document and frame manufacturing education for a national audience? How can we get manufacturing engineering and technology to be for undergraduates and at the graduate level and at two-year programs and for non-manufacturing majors. We have an opportunity for papers at ASWE and the SME National Conference, but perhaps there are other things we can do as well. Uh, coming up on October 4th is Manufacturing Day, and we should probably be supporting this as well. The Four Pillars of Manufacturing Education is a fantastic document that continues to grow and develop. Um, it's probably one of the most significant and impactful concepts that come out of the members of the steering committee and it's um, a great compliment to all the people that have worked hard to uh, promote this. It's uh, work that has a good following already and it's gaining interest. I'm a big fan of the four pillars and I've used them in several different ways. Uh, it helps me describe what the body of knowledge is and I've used it to map manufacturing engineering technology programs um, to this body of knowledge. And I've used it to map other degrees such as a bachelor's in mechanical engineering to the body of knowledge. And there is a significant difference between a manufacturing engineering program and a mechanical engineering program. Uh, we've got a great opportunity to extend the reach of these uh, pillars and the pillars concept. We have an opportunity to take some more action on the uh, SME document, the workforce imperative. It's directly related to the uh, special curricula 2015 document and the passionate work of the committee and its members. I think the future work of the MAR community should focus on efforts to address the first five of the six points from the workforce white paper. I think we have an opportunity to be a driving force behind these. I have uh, put out some possible dates. We'll uh, send out some more uh, meeting information to see where we can go with these. Uh, because I think we have a lot to talk about. I'm sure we can't do everything and we can't answer every question, but we can identify uh, some things where we have activities and priorities that we can uh, move it forward in the next year or so. So I look forward to your comments on this presentation in the attached paper. Uh, important inputs that uh, come back, I'll collect and I'll present back to the steering committee. Uh, from the conference calls, uh, it seems that 
a meeting time somewhere between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. Eastern time uh, is probably the uh, best fit for our group since we are spread out across the country. Uh, with my uh, goofy schedule and teaching this semester, Fridays become my, my prime time to, uh, to block time to uh, hold these discussions. Right now I'm looking ahead at dates on uh, the September 20th, the 11th of October, the 8th of November, and the 6th of December. Uh, I'll be working with Mark Stratton to get some more information out to you so that you can uh, let me know if any of these dates can work with your schedules. So, thanks for listening. As you can see, we have a lot to talk about. I'd like to uh, pick out a few things that we can uh, address as priorities and put plans together to advance these during the next year. Thanks a lot. I look forward to talking to you in our next uh, phone meeting. Thank you.